Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. All right, you guys. So Simplicity New Look has come out with some new, new look patterns. And that means today we are going to take a look. New look. <laughs> it's probably the worst intro ever. I'm really sorry. Okay, jumping right in here. We have got a top skirt and pants, and it looks like a little like matching set kind of. You've got a little crop top with an asymmetrical button uh, detail, which I feel like they've been doing that a lot this year. Um, and then you've got these slim fitting pants. Here we go. The concept is definitely cute. I would 100% put this top with a, uh, like a wider skirt. I don't, just don't really do the slim fit of anything. But the skirt has the matching button detail, so when these are paired on top of each other, you have buttons all the way down. Doesn't this remind you a lot of the Mimi G pattern that just came out. I mean, very similar. This is also probably a cinch to sew. I wonder what the, it looks like, yeah, it looks like the top just wraps over and buttons. Sort of like, like a button front anything would. So that's interesting. What other information do they provide us with here? Let's see. Line drawings. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, I mean, a side zipper, you've got some um, darts in the front. This is like a princess seam type of detail and I'm assuming the other princess seam is like worked into this button band somehow. You've got the same seaming in the back and then little back darts. Yeah, pretty straightforward stuff here. I think it's cute. It's definitely, you know, kind of younger, but I think we established with the spring patterns that new look might be for like teenagers, misses. I mean, it does say misses, but a lot of the McCall's ones say misses too, and they aren't that young. Okay, here's a Just for Knits pattern, which is fun. This is just called Mrs. Sportswear. You've got a dress, a top, a s and a skirt. And it's the letter sizing, extra small through extra, I'm sorry, extra small through extra large. Um... It's got like a little like gathered neckline, which is cute, a little V, some ties. This is all in one, so it's not a separate set in sleeve, so that's super simple. Same thing with the top. The top is just the dress chopped. Skirt is elasticized. Yeah, no big deal there. There's the back. I'm sorry it's cut off. I, I can't move it to the left anymore. Um, so yeah, there's that gathering of the neckline. There's literally not a single seam in the dress or the top. Oh, but there are side seam pockets. Same with the skirt, side seam pockets. Here are the line drawings a little bit bigger. There's also gathering on the sleeve on the top. Yep, again, very simple. Now, oh, this must be the top tucked into the skirt. Interesting, okay. And it's a fairly slim skirt, guys. I mean, it looks more A-line here, but on her, I mean, that's kind of mermaidy, trumpety. 
So, yeah. Cute little top, though. I like how they match the fabric, too, so it looks like a dress. That's fun. Okay. Here are those same line drawings. We just saw those. Envelope back. So here are our fabrics, interlock, jacquard, jersey, single knit. You just need to make sure it has enough stretch. That's all. Five sizes in one. Okay. Here are the finished garment measurements for the bust. Super helpful. And the hip. Awesome. And you really don't need a ton of fabric. Cool. That's all right. If I could get the fit right, I think this dress would be super comfortable. Um, all right, let's see. So now we've got a top and what do you know, pull on pants, the design of the year for all of our pattern companies. Everyone's doing elasticized waist. I don't know what that's about. So this top is like kind of cool. Yeah, it's got like a bat wing style on one side and then a set in sleeve on the other side. And then this kind of, I don't know if it's a faux tie detail, a little asymmetrical hem. Then you've got the pull on pants. And then there's this version of the top without any of the sleeve detail, which is interesting. And then these are just a patterned version of this. Um, yeah, they give you your bust and hip again. So there are those measurements. Suggested fabric, charmeuse. It's going to be so different for the top and the bottom, but like for the top, it's probably charmeuse, lawn, crepe, double georgette, and silky types, and then they separated out the pants. Also in crepe and lightweight linen. Yeah, I agree with that. Any of those like mid lightweight wovens would be good for the pants. Here are our line drawings. So you can see here, this is kind of cool and fun and different. I really can't see it paired with anything other than these kind of wide leg pants though. I mean, maybe leggings or something. I don't know. And this could be cute too. I guess it depends on how loose fitting it is. Beautiful darting in the back. I love that. Same thing with this one on this side. Maybe under here is the same thing as this. And this is like an overlay, I'm guessing. And then you've got little side seam pockets in the pants. So here she is again. That's pretty. That could be really nice, I think. Styled well. Cute. Sizing is all in one. 10 to 22, all in one. All right, now we've got a top and pull-on skirt. So the top looks to be like a little uh, peplum-ish top with an elasticized waist and wrap. The wrap hits at a really nice place that her bust apex is here. And so the crossover is maybe an inch or so above her apex, which is nice coverage. And I'm assuming they also give you instructions for all of this lace and ribbon detail. So if you like that look, they'll teach you how to do that. You also have a little cap sleeve option. Oh, here's something interesting. So I've been paying a lot of attention to the patterns that come with a sleeveless version and a sleeved version. And inevitably, what I'm realizing I think is happening without actually looking at the pattern pieces is they're trying to get away with using one pattern for the bodice 
and then having you either just leave off a sleeve or add a sleeve. And inevitably when that happens, one of the two of them doesn't fit well. And it looks like this one was drafted for a sleeve because you can tell that the shoulder is all the way out, like almost to the end of her shoulder. And there is all of this extra fabric here, which is added when you put on a sleeve, you need all that extra fabric. When it's sleeveless, you want it to be, you know, much more fitted through the arm. You can see it over here a little bit too. So that's a little disappointing. Um, I don't know how hard it is to draft two different uh, bodices, one for one drafted for sleeveless and one drafted for a sleeve. But I don't think it's that hard to alter this. You know, you would, you know, cut into your pattern piece and, you know, take out a little bit of this ease here and then scoop this out some. I think that would probably be pretty easy, I guess. I've never really tried it before. But when you look at the line drawings, there's no bust darts or anything. So, um... So yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not super, super educated on that, but you can see here, see how it's gaping? That's because this bodice is drafted for a sleeve and you need all that extra room when you have a sleeve so you can lift your arm and move around and all the wearing ease that you need. So a little something for you guys to pay attention to. You Maybe you don't really care that much. That's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> no hard feelings. I'm just trying to be a little bit more aware of the quality of the patterns that I'm buying. I have so many patterns that I don't really need, you know, anything super new unless it's like unlike anything I have. So if I'm going to buy a new one, I, I want it to be better than the one I own. So if I have like a wrap, you know, with an elasticized waist, I want the new one I buy to be better quality pattern than the one I already own. So that's why I'm kind of trying to pay attention to that. All right, sizing, one size, 10 to 22 again. Um, and here's the envelope back. So again, I'm very pleased that they're adding bust and hip garment measurements on all of these. You can see it's really generous in the bust. So, and then suggested fabrics are calico, chambray, cotton types, eyelet, gauze, jacquard, linen types, and silky types. Pretty much runs the gamut of lightweight, midweight wovens. So, probably have something in your stash for this. This makes me a little nervous. That's a very high slit on the side, right? But it could be a cute little combo, especially if you like the one with the sleeve. This is going to be a beautifully drafted uh, pattern. This one would need a little bit of work, though. All right. I'm going to try and get off that soapbox. If I notice it again, I'll point it out. All right. Next up is Mrs. Skirt in Three Links. And what do you know? It's a pull-on skirt. No zipper. No waistband. Just elastic. Uh, one version has a little tie. One version has nothing. And this one has a little belt. I do think these might be cut on the bias. Which is really cool and very elegant and, you know, high-end looking when you wear it. It looks like a million bucks no matter what shape you are. It just hugs your curves in a very beautiful elegant way. All right. Oh, this is interesting. They provided bust measurements, but there isn't a top. Huh. Oh. Oh, you know what it is? This is supposed to say hip. It's a miss. It's a typo. <laughs> oh my gosh. So A and B have this hip measurement and then C is slightly narrower. That's odd. Why wouldn't they all be the same? 
I have a feeling this whole section might be copied and pasted from a wrong pattern. But cotton type, I mean, uh, fabric types are cotton lawn, cotton types, lightweight linen types, shirtings, wall? No. This whole thing is wrong. This whole thing is wrong. I wonder if, um, weird. Okay. <laughs> well, the fabric types really should be your silky types, um, your crepes. Your Crepex satins, satin, that um, sanded satin that they have at Joanne would be beautiful. Fabrics like that. Wild. Let's see if it's in this one. Yeah, same thing. Lord help them if this is what the actual printed version looks like. Oh, man. Because look here. Requirements. One... Uh, length of elastic cording, you don't need that. A button, you don't need that. Scalloped lace, you don't need that. And ribbon, you definitely don't need that. So I'm not even 100% confident that this is right. This is wild. All right, well, good luck with that one. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Moving on. So now we have a top. Uh, looks like that's real cute. All right. I'm, I'm feeling this one, guys. Well, you know me and ruffles. So how cute. The back detail has this little yoke and then a little crossover with a ruffle that wraps around the front and comes back. That's so cute. This version has little ruffles on the sleeve and the hem. Now, I don't know if the back the back of these is all the same maybe with this little crossover. I don't know. We'll have to look at the back. And then C just has this kind of maybe flutter sleeve and whatever this is. Cute. I love this. That is just so my style. Okay, yeah, there's the back. Okay, so here's the front. It has some uh, bust darts, maybe kind of like fringe darts. That might not be the correct term. Um, but they are kind of at an angle. And then you've got this little, I don't know if that's bias tape or a band or what. Um, and then the ruffle detail for A and B that wraps around the back like so. And then... C has the same detail, but no ruffle. Cute. And then here's this. So we're not going to get any pictures of the front, which is unfortunate, but it does look very slim and very well fitted through the bust. Um, this looks really good to me. See how it's fitting her shoulder really well, which makes me wonder what's going on with this one. You know? You wouldn't really know until you looked. You could pull out the uh, instruction booklet and look at the, um, like, you know how the very first section they have all of the pattern pieces? They have line drawings for each individual pattern piece. So you could see, is there separate ones for the bodice pieces? All right, here's our envelope back. So seven sizes in one, eight through 20. Yeah, it's contrast binding. So you're making your own like bias tape basically for the neckline of all of them and the armhole of the sleeveless one. Yep. All right. So they provide the bust, the finished bust measurements there. And then your suggested fabric, chalet, chambray, cotton types, crepe de chine, jacquard, linen types, shirtings, silky types. Yeah, all of those light to mid-weight wovens. Super, super cute. I love that. This one, I would think you would want something lighter just because this little sleeve. 
but these two you can go into the mid-weight. So cute. And then we've already looked at these. So yeah, I think I'll definitely be grabbing this one. I mean, 430. Can't beat it. All right. Next up is this topper tunic. Interesting. Okay. So we have, I love this. This raglan sleeve is beautiful with this little gathered neckline and a little like neckband and the bishop sleeve. So cute. Center front seam. This belt thing, I don't know. I don't know about that. But this version has this little sleeve tie cute and this one has a flutter sleeve maybe if this were lighter weight so it's you see how this is laying real funny like all that gathering looks odd because it's uh more of a shirting maybe if it were lighter weight and then you added this belt thing that would be better yeah, I don't know. They don't give us any pictures of her without the belt. I'd be inclined just to leave that thing off. All right, here's the line drawings. So this looks like a tunic length to me. And then a little bit shorter and then a little bit shorter. So three different lengths there. And then here they are without the belt, like the drawings without the belt. And then here's the belt. I mean, the belt could be cool also if it weren't in chambray, like out of weather or suede or something else would be a lot cooler than whatever this is. Um, so keep those suggestions in mind. Here's the envelope back. So one size, I mean, sorry, one, yeah, one size, eight through 20. Um, you just need a little bit of interfacing for the belt. Here's your fabric requirements. So they're giving you finished bust measurements and then the length, notating that there are three different lengths. Cotton types, linen types, and shirtings. And then also for the top portion, chambray, cotton lawn, seersucker, and silky types. And then D, yeah, denim, leather, and suede. So I don't know why they didn't do that for the sample, but whatever. Okay. This could be cute. I just feel like this sample isn't, isn't a great representation of what this could be. I'm thinking silky type with like a leather belt would be very chic. Even if it were like tonal, like black on black, black leather with a black, like silky type, you know, fabric, that could be cool. Yeah, this could be, this could be improved a little bit, but some neat options, I think. I love the sleeves and the raglan a lot. Okay. Next up is this little wrap top. And well, that's bizarre. So it's a wrap top. It makes me feel like it's this, but really, maybe they mean this. <laughs> I don't know. Wrap top seems to be a little bit of a loose term in this one. So you've got your set in sleeve with a like longer, like elbow length bell sleeve short sleeve, sleeveless, and then randomly they just threw in this wrap version. Wait a minute. This is these are both C. I'm so confused. Is this the back? Oh, that's the back. That is very confusing. Doesn't that look make it look like that is an option for the front? They need to say like back or something. Here are the line drawings. Well, again, C and C. Oh, that says back. I'm so confused. Here are the backs. 
I don't understand how there are two versions of a C front, one with a rounded neckline or a crew neckline and one with a, with a wrap. I don't understand that at all. I feel like this is the back of C. But then they drew it this way. I don't understand. Do you guys get it? Which one is she wearing? She's wearing B. But again, we get one picture, so I really don't know. It's cute, though. I love it as a concept for like a little t-shirt. But I don't know what I'm buying. What is happening here? It's a wrap top, but it wraps around the back, I think, is what is happening. That's all I can think of. That'd be my best educated guess. All right, here's the envelope back. Five sizes in one, extra small through extra large. Contrast overlay for A. I don't even know what that means. I don't know. Contrast overlay for A. I don't get that. And B. B also has contrast overlay. Typically that means it's like a solid layer and then like a lace or eyelet or something on top. So maybe that's what they mean. Then there's C. You have your finished bust measurements, your length measurements, and your width at the hem measurements. Suggested fabrics are chalet, charmeuse, crepe, crepe de chine, jacquard, silky types. Guys, no, this is wrong again. Oh, this is so frustrating. This is asking for elastic cording and one button. What the heck do you need a button for? Which makes it make sense as to why the contrast overlay makes no sense. This is like a knit top. I am beyond with this. I can't even. Okay, well, this one's wrong too. This is annoying. I hope they get this fixed. I'm just moving on. I, I really just can't give you guys any, I can't really critique it if it's so messed up. I don't really know what I'm looking at. Okay, now we have, <laughs> I'm gonna try and brush that off. Um, okay, so we have this little dress pattern. Great. It has a yoke. I mean, look at this sleeve. This sleeve comes over her shoulder completely. Um, it has a yoke, some interesting stripe placement, and then a band at the bottom. Same thing for B. This might be sheer on B, I'm guessing. And then C has contrast yoke, sleeves, and this is like an embroidered border print deal. Yep. So there they are. The back just has a back yoke keyhole opening so you can get it on. Some kind of maybe binding for the openings and uh, side seam pockets. Okay. Here she is again. I mean, this is almost like a drop shoulder, but in the drawing, it's not really drawn that way. So I don't know. This doesn't look bad. I'm just not a thousand percent sure that that's the way it was intended to be. So also pretty, you know, straight straight design here so and then there's no back darts or anything like that so most of us would probably have to grade out here and give it more of a trapeze look what could I mean that could still be cute for sure um you'd just be going away from the original design a little bit I love those shoes okay sizes 10 through 22 we have the envelope back let's see if this one's right yeah okay 
So we've got a contrast yoke and lower band separate uh, fabric requirements for that, which is really nice. And then this one, C cut crosswise, the whole thing. This whole thing is cut crosswise. That's interesting. And then your contrast yoke. You need a lot of fabric to do it that way. Is she wearing C? No. Oh, because they're um, because it's for the border print. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And then you have your bust measurements and your length. Suggested fabrics are chalet, crepe, dupioni, okay. Jacquard, linen types, PK, shirtings, silky types, yes. Then for your lower band and the yoke, Batiste and Organza. So yeah, that is a sheer, you know, suggestion. And then C in border print fabrics. Okay. Yeah, it looks like the this is bias binding, all of that. A button and cording. Cording? Oh, for the little neckline. All right. Not my favorite, but... All right, this one looks fun. Mrs. Dress in two lengths. Easy, just for knits. So we've got a, uh, what is that? I'm forgetting the name of this neckline. Oh, shoot, I cannot remember it. Anyways, higher kind of crew neck neckline. Sleeveless version and a sleeved version. It looks like this little belt is sewn into the side seam and then tied on front. And then we've got a variety of lengths happening here. That's all I can really tell from that and that. I can't tell much about that either. Little keyhole in the back, center back seam, and the belt, A, B, C, and then D has a separate belt. So maybe A is A and D. Again, it's so confusing, you guys. I got to imagine this is just one solid piece of fabric. No darts, no seams, nothing. If I had to guess, that's what I'd say. I mean, yeah, that's definitely sewn into a side seam. It's not a separate belt. So, And I also feel like you could wrap it around the back and then tie in the front. It's long enough to be able to do that. So... Yeah, depending on just kind of the overall look you were going for, you could tie it in different ways. We've got, let's see, yeah, 8 through 20, one size, all the sizes in one pattern, 8 through 20. Um, here's your different lengths, your bust measurements, probably pretty generous, and then your finished Lengths and widths, stretch knits only, bamboo, interlock, ITY, jersey, modal, stretch velvet. Yeah, all those would be really great. And then single fold bias tape, one button, and two inch length of elastic cording. That's all for this. These last two are for the um, little keyhole. And then I'm guessing the this is all bias bound the neckline and armholes. All right. There you go. Here's a cute little number. I love shoulder ties. This is just a one dress with many different options. So it looks like you've got this center front deep V with gathers at the shoulder and the under bust, kind of a curved empire waist, seaming here in the skirt, which is lovely. I love that detail. And then you've got just a straight hem. You've got a little gathered, not even gathered, it's just a flounce. You've got an added flounce, which they're making it feel like that's what she's wearing. Oh, there it is right there. 
So rather, I mean, I imagine this is her knee, maybe. So yeah, a really decent sized flounce. Um, and then here is the same version in a solid. And then C has this really cool like off the shoulder flounce, which is also fun. This could be cute. This would be out of my comfort zone with the length for sure. I don't normally do things that hit, I don't know, is that ankle length? But I love the bodice a lot. A lot, a lot. Here she is again. Sorry, I can't get it all in one. Yeah, the fabric's a little busy and hard to really tell what's going on, but I think it's a very cute, very flattering design. I think it would look good on a lot of different body types. This is adorable. Her, yeah, her ties, maybe they didn't do bows. Because look how long her ties are versus what is here. These look so dainty. I like hers better. And then this is the back. So you've got a side zip, which is also really nice. Center back uh, seam. And then again with the little darts here. So the shaping through the waist is going to be like really nice. Really, really nice. Hard to tell on her because she's so slim as it is. But if they put this on a woman with like more curves, um, you'd really be able to tell. Cute. I really like this one, you guys. Let's see if they got this part right. All right. So, yes, this all seems to be making sense now. Um, okay, so seven sizes in one, 10 through 22. You need a little bit of interfacing. Uh, oh, the bodice is lined even better. I'm really liking this one. This is a very nice pattern. Yeah, um, and then B and C has separate measurements, four yards, oh my gosh, if you do it, I mean, I hardly ever buy fashion fabric that's 45 inches wide. Every once in a while, something will come along, but mostly it's 60 inches. Um, and then your bust measurement. I wish they had the hip measurement here too, but I mean, it seems to be wide enough to maybe not matter too much. And then this is the finished lengths. Charmeuse, cotton lawn, crepe, crepe de chine, double georgette, silky types, voile. Yeah. B, not suitable for one-way design fabrics, meaning like stripes. I'm assuming that's because of this. This must be cut in a way, maybe on the bias, which is actually nice because it will hang really beautifully but because of that you can't do anything with like a directional fabric and then you just need a little invisible zipper cute I'm definitely getting this one super cute okay now we've got this little jumpsuit which is sort of reminding me of the butterick learn to sew pattern remember it had the center front invisible zipper i think this is what that is supposed to be <laughs> this makes a lot more sense than a center front invisible zipper but all right so we've got this square neckline with a little spaghetti strap and you can see that it kind of comes to a point at the bottom which is a nice you know kind of interesting detail um, you've got this massive waist tie. This looks really low, even in the drawing. So this is kind of like a drop waist, I guess, which isn't my favorite, especially when you have a belt tied at the waist and then a seam below that. That's odd. I would move that up so that the belt concealed the waist seam. But then you've got, I want to say, maybe some darting or pleating or something happening in the pant side seam pockets and then kind of a a slim straight leg 
let's check out the line drawings so we can tell really what's going on. So yeah, it looks like there's two pleats in the pant or short and then no shaping at all in the bodice. All of that is reliant on this belt, which is interesting. Hmm, okay, that would make me instantly want to make a muslin. Um, then you have a center back zipper. Your belt is sewn into the center back seam. And then back uh, darts. So A, is A a dress? A might be a dress. That's cool. I like that they include both. Um, again, with the side seam pockets, I mentioned those before. Then you've got your, you know, kind of slim, straight leg pant, and then a short uh, romper. Super cute in this little stripe. But yeah, A is a dress. Okay. This is cute. Th again, this, this way this bodice fits, it looks great on her which makes me feel a little bit more confident, but the fact that it has no darts anywhere uh, makes me, you know, pause a little bit. But I do think this style, although it is a little young, um, I still think it's really cute and modest. And even though I don't love spaghetti straps usually, because this neckline is so high, um, I think that it's, it's a nice detail. I'd probably give this one a try. This is the same picture of her. Hmm. All right, now we've got, let's see what the envelope back looks like. Okay, this looks correct. Um, seven sizes in one, eight through 20. I like that. I, I like that a lot about new look patterns that I don't, because I typically, my bust is in the smaller set, like in McCall's, my bust is in the smaller set and my hip is in the larger set. So if I ever want to do like a jumpsuit or something, I always have to buy both. I don't have to, but I tend to buy both to make it easier on myself. So this has them all, which I think is really great. All right, there's your fabric requirements. And then bust measurements. Again, I wish they had finished hip, but that's okay. I'll take this over nothing, that's for sure. Uh, finished back length. So A, B, and C, and then you have your leg widths, which, I mean, I don't know who cares about that. Batik, chambray, cotton types, gingham, linen types, shirtings. Yeah, I would think maybe for the dress, all of those will be okay. These ones with the pants, well... Yeah, maybe it could work in all of them. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Super cute. All right. Next up is this little number. I'm getting immediate wedding vibes, either for the bride or for the bridal party or a guest. <laughs> um... The scalloped neckline is stunning. Stunning. I literally have nowhere to wear this, but it is beautiful. Um, you also have this uh, version with a strap, which is also nice. You've got uh, horizontal bust darts and vertical waist darts. Waist darts in the skirt as well. And look, they even give you this really beautiful like circle skirt version too. I want to wear this. Where can I go? Where can I go in that? I need a garden party. You know what I mean? Lovely. Really beautiful. And we get all of these uh, illustrations. Beautiful brocade. Little floral, like digital print, I guess. 
that could be like a cotton or something. Right? She looks like a million bucks. So cute. I wonder if it has boning or anything. I'm guessing not. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. There's our backs. I didn't call those out earlier. Center back zipper and some more darting in the back. So cute. One size, 10 through 22. All right, so it looks like the bodice is lined, but not the skirt. A little bit of interfacing. This skirt is cut crosswise, which is beautiful. I mean, it takes a ton of fabric, but I mean, obviously it's worth it, in my opinion. Um, no boning. So I don't know how this thing stays up, but... Maybe your shoulders just hold it up. Um, garment measurements. Here's your bust measurement and then the finished lengths. I would think A and B would be the same, but I guess they're not. And then C obviously is much longer. Brocade, chintz, cotton types, crepe back satin, damask, dubioni. I think that's, it. that's pronounced fail. Fall, I don't know. Jacquard, Satine, Shantung. So definitely they are going for a more elegant dress here. They're definitely going spring, summer event dress. Um, and then C is not suitable for one direction prints because the skirt is cut on the bias. Okay. It's really beautiful. If you have any event going on this summer, highly recommend this. So fun. And sewing scallops is so much easier than you think. All right. This might be our last one. Yep. It's our last one. A little, another dress. Okay, this is interesting. Several different looks here. We've got that same kind of high square neck with a spaghetti strap. Except this one also has this little crossover panel, which I think is actually really cute and cool. So A is the dress without the panel and just this little uh, waist tie. And then B has the little wrap, wrap around panel. And then C, randomly, I guess is maybe A without the belt and patch pockets. It looks completely different. I'm getting a totally different vibe from it, right? Here are our line drawings. So you've got little bust darts, a little split hem for A. Oh, I was really, I, I was holding my breath for some back darts, but they aren't there. But as you've seen from my tutorial, they're easy enough to add. Center back seam, center back zip too. And then also what's interesting is, and I really like this, is this little panel is just sewn into the side seam. So it doesn't wrap around the back and it, the backs basically look the same. You also have an option for a wider strap, which I know will be appealing to some of you based on your comments. Cute. So this would be maybe a more drapey fabric. This would be something a little bit more substantial. I just think that's such a fun detail, especially in this like batik stripe. So cool. And then this little fox plaid. I don't know if I love that, but some kind of like denim look. I'm getting like kind of like an apron vibe from it. Not a bad thing. But this is like a, maybe a sateen or something. So nice. That's real cute. Real cute. Nothing like I own for sure. For sure. Okay. Seven sizes, eight through 20. You need a little bit of interfacing. You, here's your 
fabric requirements, which guys, look, less than two yards for all of these. Even B? How is that possible? B is the one with the wrap, right? Yeah. Well, now I'm thinking that's not right. Here's your bus, kind of close fitting. I agree with that. And then they only provide you with the finished lengths and widths. But the fabrics are right. Batik, chalet, cotton types, gingham, lightweight linen types, shirtings, and silky types. Yeah, I don't know about the fabric requirements for B. I would think B would need a lot more because you've got this whole little extra thing. So I don't see how A and B have the same fabric requirements. So, man. Yeah, I just, I don't get it. So, I guess proceed with caution on this one as well. Maybe if I hadn't seen the uh, egregious errors in the other ones, I would maybe not even notice. But because those other ones were so messed up, I don't know if they have a lot of confidence in any of the envelope backs, <laughs> if I'm being 100% honest. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I mean, trying to overlook that, uh, what did you guys think of this collection? There are some really good ones in here. Um, I will say, uh, especially for the new look collection, which tends to be a little bit younger and a little bit, uh, not basic, but basic, <laughs> simple, you know, there's, it's not Vogue, you know, with these complicated, um, designs. There's a lot of lined bodices, which is really nice to see, um, yeah, let me know which ones you guys like. I think I'll be grabbing the top, 6622, and this dress, 6617, for sure. Um, maybe this one, too, 6614, if I had to pick three. I also do like the jumpsuit, though. I like this knit dress, so I like the top. Although it's confusing as what's going on. So yeah, there's a lot of really cute ones in here. But this uh, top and this dress for sure. Let me know what you guys are going to be picking up and what you think of this new summer collection. After this, I think we're just waiting on the calls at this point. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, I will see you all very soon. Bye.